So we're almost done creating our asset. The only thing we have left to do is to publish our item. Now there's a couple components to this that are important to point out. Um, first off, one thing that's very important with the workshop, that's where you submit your assets in Dota 2, is marketing images. In fact, you have to submit one when you submit your actual file um, for approval and to be part of the workshop to be voted on and such. So if I uh, come on up to our render previewer, texture, open material editor, and we've got our renderer here again, you can use our render previewer to create your marketing images. And I mean, this is Moto's full-blown renderer, but in a draft mode state. So it's not gonna refine a super high quality and you're not gonna be able to do high res, super high res images. But all you have to do is come over to options and save image and you can save that image out. And you can even, of course, underneath effects, change your render output to outputs like alpha. So you can separate it from the background like they like. But uh, we have a lot of great uh, functionality with Moto's render, and you can create some beautiful, beautiful images. So definitely leverage that tool when creating your marketing uh, images. All right, so I'll close that on down. We are currently still in the desicle shader maker scene, and the reason for that is I want to kind of point out a few more aspects of it. First off, I'm going to turn off this topo two object and come over to this duplicate of it and turn that on. And that was in the scene previously, and the reason why is here in the shader tree. Um, the duplicate object has the baked textures material assigned to it. And if I expand this group, inside here is only the combined images of the normal mask 2, mask 1, and color images. And I just, you know, grabbed the images from down here that I created and dropped them in here so that this way I could come back to the item list when I was done, file new to create a new scene, select my second retopo object, drag and drop that into my new scene and leave children and shaders active. Okay. Um, when you come into the new scene, you might want to delete the extra mesh layer, just be thorough and add an item locator, group locator, select one image, then hold down shift to select them all in that row and drag and drop those into the group locator and name that textures just to get a nice cleaned up scene. All right, so select the top O2 item, come back to the shader tree, underneath imported shaders, select the baked textures and drag that out, delete the imported shaders group. We just don't want that. And um, since we have this object isolated now, we can save this out and I want to save it as desicle standalone, perfect. And all I have in the scene are my four images. They're the high res versions, mind you, um, and the actual object itself. So since I've got everything nicely organized, what I wanna do now is come over to file, open, and I wanna navigate to the location where you have your the BLX files for the hero that you're creating the asset for, or the FBX files will be fine as well. I'm gonna go with Moto's BLX files though. And I want to open up the Necrolyte weapon.blx file. And here we have the original file that we edited a many, many videos ago at this point. So files open, come back to our desicle standalone file, grab our top O2 object, drag and drop that into our Necrolyte weapon.blx file. And now it's in here. Um, you may want to move your textures into a texture group again. Now select the top O2 object and in component mode, you're gonna lose your textures but move the object into place and you're not losing your textures forever. It will come back when we toggle it off and on. All right, so just let that sit right on top of the existing sickle item. Right click on that object, the currently bound one. And yes, I want to delete that. We don't want it anymore. Um, we are very happy with the way things are now. Whoops, actually, okay, I undid that because I decided maybe I wanted to check and see if it was over far enough. You know what? It wasn't, so I want to nudge that topo2 object on over a little bit to align right along the center axis. There we go. Good. I'm happy now. All right, so now delete that. Lots of undos. You can set lots of undos in Moto. Definitely good advice. Um, I need lots of undos. So let's come over to the shader tree, and we'll just toggle the imported shaders to get our texture back. Open up that group. 
Left click and drag that on out. And um, you'll notice since we saved this from the FBX file, it doesn't have any of the render outputs, um, any of that stuff. You know what, we really actually don't need it right now. We just need to make sure we have this combined images group right here. And um, select the sickle material, which was for the previous object, delete it, come to clips and delete all the original Necrolyte materials if they are in there. Delete, now we only have our stuff. All right, so what we want to do now, though, since we have everything in place, is let's replace our images. These are the high-res ones. So go into Photoshop with these images. You can just right-click, open with default application. And if that's Photoshop or Painter or whatever you use, open that up and downsize these to 256 by 256 in the case of the Necrolyte. Check in the documents as to what the correct texture size is for your character or object. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and replace as still because I have now gone ahead and made the low res ones. And I'm going to replace this object with decicle L underscore normal because that is the proper low res one. And replace each and every associated one with the low res. And you can see 256 by 256. Replace as still, mask one and replace as still. If you don't do this, you will get, will get an error. Um, just to kind of give you a heads up, mass two. All right, everything all loaded up and ready. All we have to do now is bind our weapon to the appropriate bone. And if you come up here to the Steam menu, you can see that we have bind Dota 2 workshop item. Just click on that and we can select the bone name. And in this case, you need to find this information out. It's sickle one bone, which is the bone for the weapon, what the weapon is attached to. And the mesh name, we only have one mesh, topo. You can assign which mesh. So okay, it is now bound. We can even come up here to our um, visibility options and show weight maps, come over to the list, um, view our new weight map, and there you go. You can see that it is bound properly. And oops, we want that definitely to be active. Um, turn off the visibility of the weight maps. There we go. All right, now save this out again. And I like to do a lot of saving and we'll name that bind. Save that wherever you want. Probably save that in you know the actual root folder for the project you're working on. And file exists, yes, go ahead and overwrite that. Now what we're gonna do is come up to Steam and open Dota 2. Now, underneath your system preferences, under the bottom there's Steam and Dota 2. Um, set which version you want to open. Um, if you want to publish, you have to use Dota 2, not test. And underneath the Steam install directory, um, you need to set the correct location because right now you see it sets C program files x86 Steam. That's not where I have it. Um, so if I come over to a computer, I have Steam located in my G directory, a whole whole drive dedicated to nothing but Steam. Select that folder, and there we go. Now I have the correct Steam install directory. It'll know what to do with the packed items now. So Steam and open Dota 2. Yes, I want to allow you. And I have it set to launch a windowed um, instance of Dota 2, so that makes life a lot easier. And now I'm listening to the wonderful Valve music as everything is starting up. And as usual, it's extremely loud and uh, very ambient. All right, so we'll go ahead and let Dota 2 load up. Come on, come on, come on. I want to get my object submitted. And if you'll notice what it does when you launch Dota 2, it actually takes you to the correct location in the game to submit your items. It takes you to the workshop portion. Um, See, so yeah, I just click in the viewport, and now I am in the workshop. I can click on publish new submission, wearable item, and I have all this information to enter. Wow, that's kind of annoying, isn't it? Well, we can kind of use Moto Steam Edition to do that for us. So let's come on over here, and um, I will come back to the Steam menu now that Dota 2 is open. Click on that, come down to Pack Dota 2 item, set your submission file name, choose the correct hero ID, in this case, the Necrolite or Necrophobos or whatever, we'll find out in just a second anyway. Um, mesh LOD 1 and 0 name. Um, since in the case of the Necrolite, um, 
the mesh LED zero and one actually have the same geometry. I'm just, I just have this one item in my scene, so topo two will do for both. But if your item, which most likely it does need both LED zero and LED one, um, you need to have both those meshes in your scene, both bound to the bone, and you can identify which ones you want attached. All the correct images are selected, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, and it's telling me invalid steam path. Okay, well, I need to set that in system, and preferences and steam dota 2 now it's time to go back to the steam menu click on that come down to pack dota 2 item and you'll get this dialog pop up for submission file name i'm going to enter in neck test change my hero id to necrolite and I need to uh, set my loadout slot for weapon because that's what I'm doing. But you can see that we have the other items in there as well. And um, for mesh LED zero and one name, I only have one mesh in here because the uh, LED zero and one are actually identical for this weapon, which I mentioned. But if your character has different um, LED zero and ones, uh, one meshes, then this is where you're going to assign which one is which. And you need to have both those meshes in your scene and bound to the appropriate bone. And down here are our textures, good stuff. So let's go ahead and hit okay. And there we go, Dota 2 item packed successfully. Yay, let's come back now to Dota 2. And just hit this little button right here to upload a submission. And there we go, all of our information was correctly input. And I can just hit import. It's importing all the that content for us. Import successful, okay. And yay, there is our Dota 2 item inside this quick model preview. We can click on animations to kind of see how it does with animations, how what kind of interactions it has with the animations themselves. There might be clipping, things of that sort. And we also can check out daytime and nighttime scenes. And furthermore, go into an actual in-game preview to test your submission in-game. All right, yes, by all means, start a local game server, please. All right, now we get to navigate through the huge number of Dota 2 characters that exist. See, we're at E. I mean, come on, we need to get to N. Uh, all right, M, N, and okay, there we go. His name now is Necrophos. Oh, yes, that is definitely more intimidating. Now, you'll go ahead and see the default item there. That's no big deal. Press play, and you get dropped in game, and you can see that I now can see my item in game. Now, check this out. There's this new um, mode. If you click on this little icon here, you'll zoom right in at ground level with your object, and with the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and see a really close-up, high-detail view of your item and your character in context with one another. So yay, we're finally pretty much done. Um, at this point, all you have to do is continue the submission process to submit to Steam Workshop and add a marketing image. So I'll come back here and just all I'd have to do is hit submit and it wants a submission file the preview image. So browse for a preview image, add that in there and continue the submission process. Once you're done, you'll actually have a page on the Steam Workshop and or the, uh, the Dota 2 Workshop. And I'll come over to my quick submission right here, the death sickle. By all means, please go and vote for it if you feel like voting for it. Um, love to see it in game. But here is my Dota 2 Workshop page with this object um, showing it working correctly. Um, create a nice beauty render. I think that's a horrible beauty render. We like to do a better one. Um, create a an in-game video showing how things look and a couple screen grabs um, so that people can get a good idea of the object you created. So congratulations. You made it all the way through all these different steps and made a, uh, a game asset. That's pretty, pretty awesome. So I can't wait to see what people produce with Moto Steam Edition because I think um, this tutorial kind of shows how incredibly broad and powerful of a tool it actually is, even in a simplified version like the Steam edition of Moto.